you should now have a decent understanding of the binary um, numbering system. We, I, I discussed how uh, base two, what base two really means, and what base ten really means, and um, how to convert between the two to try to increase your understanding of the binary system. You'll fully understand why binary is so important as we go a little bit further on into the uh, into the semester. Now, um, I would like to discuss the hexadecimal numbering system. And as I like to start most lectures, I'd like to explain a little bit why. Why should you care about the hexadecimal numbering system other than you're going to see it everywhere? Well, I want you to picture this. Stare at this screen for a few minutes. Look at all these zeros and ones together. Can you imagine staring at screen after screen of data like this and trying to make any sense out of it? This, this would be near impossible. The human brain is just not wired to be able to tell the difference between such little variation in an image. So we use a shortcut. Instead of displaying things in binary, in zeros and ones, what typical tools show you, what typical digital forensics tools show you, is hexadecimal numbers. Hexadecimal, so decimal, the DCI in decimal, deci, it stands for 10. It's a base 10 numbering system. Binary, the bi, means 2. Hexadecimal, hex, means 16. So the base 16, so hexadecimal is a base 16 numbering system. Base 10, 10 symbols. Base 2, 2 symbols. Base 16, we use 16 symbols. Those symbols should be very obvious to you. First, we use 0 through 9, just like base 10, but instead of going to 1, 0 and adding another symbol, we go A, B, C, D, E, and F. We use a total of 16 symbols to represent any number in a hexadecimal system. It's used to make large amounts of binary more readable because once you get the trick of it, once you get the knack, it's actually very easy to convert between hexadecimal and binary. So take a look at this. What's easier to read? The information on the right in binary or the information on the left? Hexadecimal. Obviously, the information on the left is easier to read because it has more variation in the, in the symbology. There's more symbols to look at, so it's easier to make sense of. And that's why we use it. Now, I've heard a lot of statements from students, especially when they're answering questions that don't make any sense and really kind of demonstrate a lack of understanding. Hexadecimal is a translation system only. Don't get confused. Information is not stored in hexadecimal. Computers do not read things in hexadecimal. Computers store things and they read things in binary. It's just too difficult for us as mere humans to be able to look at the binary information and make sense of it. So we use base 16 or hexadecimal as a translation system. It has nothing to do with the way the information is stored it is only how the information is often presented to us, uh, us humans. So base 10, going from base 10 to base 16 for the first 15 characters is easy. You just line the numbers up. We write 0 through 9 on the left and we write 0 through 9 on the right. Because until then it's exactly the same thing. But whenever we go from 9 to 10 in base 16, we don't have to add another digit on the left because we have more symbols. In fact, we have the symbol A. So instead of going from 9 to 1, 0, we go from 9 to A. Okay, what comes after A? B. What comes after B, C, and then D, E, and F? So we can just line those up on the left. 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 D, 14 E, and finally 15 is F. Don't get confused. Base 16 means 16 different symbols, but since we start counting at 0, we go from 0 to 15. 
So, oh look, our kittens are back to visit. So, in base 10, we have one zero kittens. We have 10 kittens. In base 16, once again, we have another symbol to use. So instead of adding another symbol on the left, we just move to the next symbol in the list, which is A. So in base 16, this many kittens would be A kittens. And that would represent what we would normally call in base 10, 10. Okay, so let's say Cat Lady, let's say this, these kittens all belong to Cat Lady, and she just still doesn't have enough kittens. We're going to add a few more. In fact, we're going to get all the way up to 16 kittens. Oh no! Let's think about this a second. 16 symbols. Oop, keep going back. We go from 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, e, and F. F stands for 15. So what am I going to do if I have more kittens? If I need to go one more digit past the number of symbols that I have available? Well, in binary, when I was at 1 and I wanted to go to 2, I had to add a symbol on the left. In base 16, I do the same thing. I'm going to have to add a symbol on the left. I'm going to have to use two symbols instead of one symbol. So, I add a 1 and I add a 1, and then I use 0. So, now, basically, instead of counting in base 2, uh, or powers of 10 for base 10, and powers of 2 for base 2, I'm now counting in powers of 16. We can see this if we write this number down in long format. It gets a little bit more difficult because we're using powers of 16, which aren't as easy to count in as 10s and 2s. But 0 times 16 raised to the 0, well, we're not worried about that. 0 times any number is 0. But if we were, 16 to the 0 would be 1. Plus 1 times 16 to the 1 which would be 16. So this many kittens in base 10 would be 16 kittens. But to represent this number in base 16, we would write 1, 0. Let's test your understanding just a bit. I'm gonna, I, I recommend pausing this video and then going through and answering every one of these questions. Test yourself. Assume that all numbers represented here are base 16. Okay, well, 1, 0 plus 1. Okay, well, we're not having to add any digits. If these two numbers were both, okay, assuming these numbers are both in base 16, then the next number after 10, so 1, we just want to advance a single number past 1, 0. What's that going to be? Well, it's no different than uh, if it was, both numbers were in base um, base 10. It's just going to be 1, 1. Okay. Now, it's going to get a little trickier from here on out. Well, maybe. Yes, it's going to get a little trickier from here on out. 1, 9 plus 1. Okay. Well, if we were to put these numbers on top of each other like, we're normally, like we would normally do, we would put the 1 under the 9. And if it was base 10, then we would write a 0 and we would carry the 1. But this is base, base 16. What comes after 9 in base 16? Well, let's look at our chart. We get an A. Okay, well, that means instead of 1, 9, we're not going to 1, 0. We're not having to put a, when we add 1 to the 9, we don't have to do 0 and carry the 1. Instead, we just write 1, A. A is a single digit, so we have no reason to carry anything over to the next column. Ah, but look at the next one, 2F. What comes after F? Well, nothing comes after F. We have to add another symbol. So after F, if I were to add 1 to F, I would actually get 1, 0. Just like we were here whenever we went from, whenever we were trying to figure out what 16 would be. So f plus 1 equals 1, 0. So just like we would do in um, any other math, we would line the 2 under the f. Okay, We add 1, we get 1, 0. We add 2, we're just going to get 1, 1. Okay? So I would have a 1, carry the 1, and get 3, 1. Okay? 9f9. 
It looks hard, but it's not. We've already kind of tackled this one. 1 plus 9 in base 16, 9 just goes to A, correct? So this would just be 9FA, because after 9, we just moved A. Oh, but in 4, 5F, we've got that F again, but that's okay. We know that after F, we go to 1, 0. So just like we would in any other math, when we line the 1 up here, we would put a 0, carry the 1 to the next column. Okay, so we've got a 0. We carry the 1 to the next column, 1 plus 5. We go to 6, and then 4. All right, this is not as easy as it looks, or hard as it looks. So 1F minus 2. Oh, we're going in the other direction. That eh, doesn't really matter. F, what's two positions lower than F? Okay, well, F, E, and then D. Okay, we're just subtracting 2. So 2 less than F would be D. Okay, we didn't go far enough to affect the next column, so we'll just go 1, D. All right, finally, C minus 3. Oh, that's easy. I was too easy with these. C minus 3 would be B, A, and then 9. We're just moving back 3, just like we would if we were doing math in any other base. So C minus 3 would be 9. Of course, if the numbers were bigger, it would get a little bit more complicated, but I hope you get the idea. When you go from F, or when you go past F, you have to consider that you're adding something to other columns, just like you would in any uh, basic addition. Um, and when you advance past 9, you don't go to 1, 0. You go to A, because in hex, the next symbol is A. Let's put all those back to question marks, and then move on. We might have a few simple ones of those on the test for the midterm. If you need some practice, please let me know. Maybe I'll do another tutorial or uh, make some practice problems advancing you know, using just some very simple addition with hex, hex numbers. Okay, now let's make sure we understand. Let's convert some of these numbers to, uh, to decimal. Let's go from hexadecimal to decimal. If we want to do it the hard way, or maybe the mathematical way, all we really have to do is write this number out in long format using base 10 numbers. For example, C1A would actually be A times 16 to the 0, plus 1 times 16 to the 1, plus C times 16 to the 2. We're writing this out in long format using powers of 16, just like we wrote binary out in powers of 2, and decimal numbers out in powers of 10. Now let's just change all the hex numbers to their decimal equivalents. C becomes 12, A becomes 10. Now we just have to do the math. 12 times 256, which is 16 to the 2, plus 1 times 16, plus 10 times, or yeah, 10 times 1. Because 256 is 16 to the 2, 16 is 16 to the 1, and 1 is 16 to the 0. So 3,089. So C1A in decimal would be 3,089. Hex Hexadecimal to binary is a little more tricky, but we use a shortcut that makes things really, really, really simple. All you have to do is create three columns. A decimal column, 0 to 15. A hexadecimal column, 0 to F. And then we can just fill in the binary column by counting in binary. Counting in binary is pretty simple. You, if you just try it a few times, practice a little bit, it should come fairly easy to you. Or you can just translate each, dec each decimal number into its binary equivalent, uh, as we've already shown. But if you want to count, all you got to do is kind of learn the, the sequence. Hang on a second. Let me pull up. Hey, oh, there's the translation tutorial. Let me just clear all that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Zero is zero, 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 zero. F, or 15, is one, 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 one. If you want to figure that out mathematically, remember, that's just going to be one, plus 2, plus 4, 
plus 8, which equals 15, because those are the powers of 2 represented there. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3. To count in between, first, after 0, 0, 0, 0, you would just go 0, 0, 0, 1. We just want 1 all the way on the left. What comes after what comes after 1? Well, we don't have a 2 in binary, so we have to use something on the left. So we're going to use 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. What comes after 1, 0? Well, we can still add something to the right here. So it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay. But now we're limited again. If we want a number any bigger, we have to use this column, which is going to be 0, 1, oops, 0, 1, 0, 0. When we're starting at the low, when we're starting at the low end, we're just going to have zeros all the way on the right. Now you just start repeating from above. 0, 1, 0, 1. Then what comes after 0, 1? 1, 0. Okay, so 0, 1, the wrong number there. 0, 1, 1, 0. All right, I'll do that again in the hexadecimal translation tutorial. So anyway, you can do it either way. You can, tra you can translate mathematically or you can just learn to count in binary and fill out the column. You're going to have to, you're going to want to recreate this column or this chart for tests. So practice a few times creating this column and, uh, well more than a few if you get it wrong, and um, Make sure you can draw that so that you can write this chart out on a test so you can get the translations correct. So 3C40, if I want to convert that into binary, all I have to do is map out the symbols 3C4 and 0 in binary. 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. 4 is 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. C is down here, 1100, zero, zero, and then 3 is 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Then all you do is write those numbers out. 0 is 0000, zero, 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 4 is zero, 0100, zero, zero, C 1100, zero, zero, and 3 zero, zero, one, one. Oh my gosh, yes, it is that simple. 4EF, well, F is all 1s, E is 110, zero, and 4 is 0100. Zero, zero, zero. 4EF is 01001101011111. Amazing. So, on the practice chart, practice going from hexadecimal to binary and from hexadecimal to decimal. Or, you know, sometimes I find the easiest thing to do is to go from hexadecimal to binary and then from binary to decimal and use binary as an intermediate step instead of trying to go straight to decimal because then you don't have to worry about the powers of 16. So work a few of those. If you think you got it, you got it. Go on to the next uh, lecture, well the next module. This is the last in the series of lectures. If you don't, then watch the hexadecimal translation tutorial to follow this video.